Welcome, dear friends, to Wellness Spring. And today I'm so honored and blessed to have a lovely friend with me, Maria Carolina Bruhl Rojas, whom I met for the first time in Monaco in 2018. And she was one of the amazing speakers with a team of scientists before we promoted Nassim Haramin. So welcome, Maria Carolina, to Wellness Spring. So lovely to have you here with us today. Oh, thank you, Beverly, for this beautiful opportunity. And for me, it's a pleasure to be here with you again, you know. Oh, the time passed, passed, and <laughs> yeah, life passed. <laughs> So see you again is is really really emotional. Thank you. Oh, thank you. The same for my listeners. Maria Carolina is a well-known astronomer with a long string of accolades to her name. She has a vast experience of 21 years of astronomy. Maria Carolina is a renowned Colombian scientific disseminator who has dedicated a large part of her life to promote in science and astronomy in national and international levels. And thanks to her work and dedication, she's managed to obtain recognitions in her field of action, including the title as the first woman to lead an astronomical observatory in Latin America, and also recognition at the International Congress of Astronomy in Chile in 2009 for her remarkable work. And these are only two small things, well, big things. She has so much more. And uh, it was amazing because, as everyone knows, uh, Nassim Haramein is the, a world number one physicist. And um, he listened to her speak and was blown away and offered her work at the event there and then to be part of his um, resonance science research team. And um, so, and I believe on your very, very first scientific expedition as an astronomer with uh, the Resonance Science Foundation, in Mexico in 2019 on your own initiative and with obviously prior authorization and consent with Nassim, you translated the Unified Science course into Spanish. Please tell us and tell all the listeners what was that like, you know, when Nassim offered you work and then to take your own initiative and have that freedom to run and be your own self and shine. Oh, wow. <laughs> but just say <ate> everything. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's... Um, oh, thank you, Beverly. Oh. <laughs> yes, in fact, uh, work with, uh, with Nassim Harabin has been really, really interesting because, you know, all my life I have worked with uh, or in the general astronomy work, you know? all the time. So when I met Nassim Haramein, for me was something really important in my life because I, I can find uh, answers to a lot of uh, questions that I had during all my life, you know, about cosmological concepts. Uh, so work right now with Nassim is really special for me because I can Mm, I can see the everything. I can see the full picture, you know? So it's not just the general uh, astronomy. You, you need to see more, more beyond. Wow. And um, 
tell us how about your background because you mentioned you've been doing this all your life but i also know you did a civil engineering degree at the same time as you did your astronomy so i know you're very humble so if you could tell us a bit about your background where you grew up and your parents and if you have any siblings and then what led you on this journey okay i I think that my passion about astronomy started maybe when I was seven or eight years old. Maybe uh, watching a lunar eclipse, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was in love with all the mystery about astronomy. So I love all the science class and my school and the science programs on TV, especially, you know, Cosmos of Carl Sagan. In fact, I think that Carl Sagan was my first influencer, real influencer <laughs> in this world of science, you know. So I started to read a lot of books about astronomy and physics and science in general. And uh, yes, my, my mother, uh, support me all the time. She gave me all the books that I wanted and uh, she bought my first uh, binoculars, you know. And uh, when when I finished my high school, I, I joined an um, astronomer association because at that time here in Colombia, uh, there was no Mm, astronomer career at the university. Yeah. That's why I studied civil engineering. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but during all the time, I, I continue to uh, study astronomy, work on this. Um, I create a lot of um, groups of astronomy first in my university, then in different entities. And finally, I could uh, buy my first telescope. Was, wow, you don't have idea my happiness at that moment. And I just start to make a lot of astronomical observations. And you know, when you see the planets, the telescope is, your, your mind just blowing, you know, it's boom. <laughs> Yeah. To see the realities, to see the creation is uh, is wonderful. So, thanks to my work uh, during all this time, um, I I was the director of astronomical um, a observatory. That's why I became the first woman to lead an astronomical. Um, the observatory here in Latin America was really, really, really good experience. Uh, I felt, wow, so enormous uh, humility at that moment. And it was really, really, really beautiful time. But as you can see, I started civil engineer, but in parallel, I I work all the time in astronomy, in general astronomy. Wow. It's interesting yes. that you chose um, two male orientated careers, you know. What, what does that feel like, you know, being one of the only women, female astronomers and civil engineer and being in that masculine male energy? Yes, oh, well, um, hmm. I have been always surrounded by men <laughs> because you know the astronomical associations and in the and engineers the percent of men is really really high you know the 80 yeah. percent are men so i i have been involved in the world men all the time for me my experience uh, has been really good 
because when I joined uh, to this uh, astronomer association, I was the only woman. <laughs> and I was 19 years old. <laughs> wow. Yes. With 45 men around me all the time, you know. So it was a little bit scared for me, but I was so happy, so happy to be in, in this uh, beautiful place, you know, the, the astronomical world. So they, they support me, but you know, well, telling the truth, <laughs> when, I, when, when I became a director of this observatory, I, I felt a little envy of some of them, you know? But I think that this is just normal in relative yeah. terms, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, it's, it's interesting, and uh, and you know when I went to Chile in yes in two thousand nine, yep. I I I gave a, a lecture, a keynote lecture about women in science, women in astronomy, and um, and I could change the paradigm. That's why right now some. Uh, the, the women, the women has right now more opportunities in in the observatories. Wow. Yes. The percent increase. Yes, thanks. Thanks to your great work, you know, you've been a great ambassador for females in astronomy and a great pioneer of changing the mindset for the men, you know, to be accepting of women in astronomy as well. So thank you, thank you. And it's interesting you mentioned that um, you, your passion developed at the age of seven because I'm always in awe as a sailor, you know, you go out and I love the night watches so you can sit on the rails and watch the this darkness and the stars come out and as a child and i think many children do this we lie on the ground and look up in the stars and you know we ask all those big questions you know where are those little light points coming from and you know what are they really and you know how did they get there and how did we get there so I think, I believe this is how astronomy came about, but can you tell us how astronomy did first come about? Yes, I think that was just the, the inspiration. It's, it's just inspiration. When you look at the sky, you just felt a big uh, emotional things. Um, for me, when it was a really, really, <laughs> Little, <laughs> little, little, little woman. Uh, I was in love with the stars. I was in love with the darkness. I was in love with the moon. I, I just start my path in this beautiful world. And, 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 and yes, I think that was with uh, just seeing like a lunar uh, eclipse. That's yeah. the moment. I think that was that moment when I when I thought, okay, I really love this. I want to know more more about the universe, the, the stars. Yes. So yeah. And, and as I told you, I start to read a lot of books. You don't have idea my. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of books about uh, astronomy and science. Yes. Yeah. That's why the. The astronomy is really important, you know, in the in the kids, yeah. in the school. Yeah. You have to learn about the universe. It's part of you. Yes, I think this is um, really important to get that message out. And um, because, you know, today everybody is into science and that's what science is about, the astronomy, you know, it's, we are, we are part of it. Can you tell us um, a bit about what we call unified astronomy? Because I know there's different classifications of 
astronomy. Okay, yes. Um, the difference is really big <laughs> mm. because uh, you, you can find everything about classical astronomy, general or standard astronomy, you know? This yeah. astronomy uh, use the classical and modern physics, you know? Uh, quantum physics, relativity and gravity and all these concepts about the universe, yes? But the problem is that all these theories in, in the classical astronomy has uh, like a big gaps, yes? That's why the conventional scientists uh, use strange terms like uh, social um, dark energy, for example, and mark, mark dark matter uh, and use different uh, particles like his boson, quarks, gravitons. And in fact, all this is really unnecessary, unnecessary. But what is the big problem? The problem is that in the classical astronomy, you can't link the relativity with the quantum physics with uh, gravity. <laughs> but when you learn about unified physics, theories, 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 theories <laughs> by Nassim Haramein, yeah. you start to understand everything, you know? Because uh, you, you have to consider that the universe, that the space is not empty, is full of energy. Yes? Yes. And, um, and, and, and think that everything is connected, you know? Micro and macrocosmo is the same, just in different scale. In the unified astronomy, you, you learn about uh, the universe like with different terms like holographic and fractal concepts. It's different because in, the, in classical astronomy, you, you can't imagine that everything is connected. Yes? Yeah. It's, uh, everything is isolated. And it's really strange because it's the opposite, it's the contrary. <laughs> Everything is connected. So in unified astronomy, you can you can see the, the reality. You can see that, uh, for example, that the one proton in the universe has the all the information from the whole universe because we are living in a fractal universe and it's holographic at the same time. So for example, the information of the universe is inside you because your body was created with all this matter from the cosmos. <laughs> you know, your electrons, your protons, your atoms, your energy was made in the cosmos. So you start to see the, 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 the reality of the universe, yes. And the other important thing is, for example, in the conventional astronomy, you study the black holes like, so the black holes are the end of the star evolution, you know? But in the unified astronomy, you see that the black holes are the seeds of the creation, not the, the final stage of, for example, the stars. In fact, the black holes create the universe, the black holes create the stars, the galaxies, create our bodies. We are made of black holes, micro black holes. Wow. So everything 
so different. Everything is so different. That's why it's really important to uh, uh, start to study unified astronomy. And this course is free, <laughs> you know? Wow. Yes, it's online. So is it your course or Nassim's course or how do people it's find the, it? It's the Resonance Science Foundation course. Oh, it's free. Oh, I made, yes, I, I, I made one elective about unified astronomy. And it's really beautiful because it's like the, the path yeah. from the classical astronomy yeah. to unified astronomy in detail. It's so beautiful. It's a beautiful elective. Right now it's in Spanish, but soon in English. Oh, fantastic. With the <laughs> fantastic. <Yes. laughs> And yeah. at, the, at the beginning, you said that since you were a child, you've asked many big questions. And thanks to Nassim, you've been able to have the answers to those questions. So is this part of the answers, the unified astronomy that you've been looking for? Yes, yes. <laughs> In fact, I, I, I am the, um, developed like a model. Yeah. New models about star evolution and galaxy evolution because everything is so different. You need to change everything. <laughs> wow. Yes, because the first step to create a star is the black hole, not right. the last. <laughs> wow, this <laughs> this is going to be difficult, I think, for a lot of people to understand the concept because you know, it's completely opposite to what people have learnt as a child and read in books and so forth. So, wow, this is revolutionary. Yes, it's revolutionary. And that's why I have had a lot of problems with my, <laughs> my colleagues in yeah. classical astronomy, you know. A lot yeah. of them just say, oh, Carolina, what happened with you? You know what? You are in other dimension. Bye bye. Yes, I have had problems, problems. Oh. But, but when you when you know that that you are in the right uh, place, in the in the in the right side. Yeah, you are free. <laughs> you are free and and you just want to to be like the science communicator. Yeah. Know? I really want that the, all the people knows about this because it's revolutionary, but and it's true, it's the, it's the answer of a lot of questions that right now all the conventional scientists has in his papers, in, the, in their mm -hmm. papers, you know? For example, the anomalies in the galaxies, uh, anomalies in the evolution of the universe, uh, about the expansion of and the velocity of the universe. What is what is the dark matter and dark energy? What is quarks? Quarks yeah. doesn't exist. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What really exists are Planck's spherical units. Wow. Yes, that is like a, a boxes of energy. And these boxes of energy uh, are, mm, are the seeds of everything, you know, the geometry of the universe. Right. It, it, it is a deep level, but it's, it's easy to understand. It's easy to understand if you go into the details and start to see the difference and see, oh, wow, this makes sense. Dark matter not make sense. This makes sense, <laughs> you know? Everything about black holes right now is so strange because black holes are not the monsters. No, black holes are the seeds of the creation. So the scientists say, oh, what? <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, it's the truth. So that's why I uh, work uh, right now with Resonance Explanation, the Sinhara Main. It's really, really a, a passionate, you know, 
because I can I can find solutions. I can I can see the reality. I can be involved in all this beautiful and magical science. Fantastic. Wow. That's amazing. I can feel your passion and I know I know that you're a constant student and you're always studying, studying, studying and doing the research and, you know, looking for questions, looking for answers and, as you said, looking for solutions. And I think people shouldn't just be taking everything for granted and being like a sheep and following. It's wonderful that you've stood in your power and even though traditional astronomers are saying, you know, Maria Carolina, what's wrong with you, etc., we're leaving you behind, you know, it's good, you know, and to have the support of Nassim as well. You know, I know you're very powerful in your own right, and I'm sure you both complement each other and the work with um, resonance um, um, studies, you know, because it's amazing the work that he's doing. And it's great that you're part of the team, because I know he has all the top experts on his team. And um, yes. because, because you mentioned um, black holes and monsters, um, what are your thoughts on extraterrestrial life? <laughs> this is another interesting topic, you know, <laughs> enigmatic topic. You know what? The scientists, conventional scientists, don't don't like to talk about it because it's extraterrestrial life. No, please, come on. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> For me, life exists around the universe. It's just normal. For example, uh, just in, in our galaxy, Milky Way, there are hundreds of billions of stars. You know? Yeah. And each star maybe has one planet why not so you you start to think okay maybe we have 100 billion <laughs> of exoplanets in just in our galaxy but in the universe there are 100 billions of galaxies each one with 100 billions of stars so you have to multiply and, and just think, okay, this is really big. The universe is really big. And, and uh, just to think that we are alone in the universe is, is, uh, is not, not make sense. You know, it's, uh, it's strange, it's strange. Right now, the, the number of exoplanets is really big. And um, and we have we can see we can see uh, solar systems really really close from us in our galaxy. So why not? And the other thing is that we have evidence in this planet about a high technological level. You know. So, so I'm, I'm convinced that um, we are not alone, that there are a lot of uh, extraterrestrial life, maybe um, with a big technological knowledge. Uh, and, uh, and, and of course, Life is different here than in, on Mars, maybe on Jupiter and the other solar systems, because it's not the same chemistry. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know? Yes, it's, it's, it's probably, probably so different, but I think that, that we are not alone. And just, just to think that uh, the universe, that in the universe, there is just 
this humanity is really, really, really stupid and egocentric thought. Yeah. Yeah. And, so one, and one thing, yes, and uh, one thing that the, that the astronomy teach you is the, the meaning of the word hu humility. You need to be humble. You need to, to know that you are not the one in the universe, that you are part of this beautiful universe. You know, you are not alone. You have to have connection with the rest of the people. You, you have to, to keep your focus in good things because everything is connected. You know, and you are connected with the cosmos and maybe with these beautiful and different entities, you know, in, in other worlds. Or maybe here, you don't have idea, you know, but we have evidence. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. I remember listening years ago to a talk with um, Dr. Bruce Lipton and, you know, he said, imagine we're like, you've got all the millions of cells in the body, but imagine if we could be like one of those cells and we're transmitting information to different universes and they're sending us messages back. You know, I yeah. think, as you say, a lot of people are narrow-minded would have been like the first people on the planet because for years people believed the planet was flat and if we get to the edge, we fall off. So... Yeah. I admire you for standing in your power and um, continuing your great work so that the world can evolve and that we can, you know, all grow from it. And because you mentioned it should be taught in schools, are there any schools teaching astronomy the way that you are teaching? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. For yeah. me, it's really important. Each, each child needs to learn about the physics, about the astronomy, and about the sacred geometry, you know? It's the universal yeah. geometry. For me, it's really important to talk about it because we are made of this beautiful metric, this beautiful geometry of the universe, and everything is so perfect in the universe, including you, you know? So for me, it's really important if, if you are like a kid from five years old and if you start to, to learn about the geometry of the universe, the geometry of the nature, the geometry of everything, you start to go in a, in a good way, you know, about science, about the connections between archaeology, physics, math, uh, chemistry, geometry, biology, everything is connected, not isolated. Yes, totally agree. So are there any schools teaching it, teaching the children? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> All the schools need, need, to, need to teach astronomy. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. This I is, did it. You did it. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. And I, I know that you also studied sacred geometry with Drenvalo Melchizedek. What was that like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a beautiful experience to learn about sacred geometry with Drenvalo Melchizedek. Maybe it was, oh, I don't know, in 2008. Wow. <laughs> 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 he came here in Bogota and, and he did a beautiful experience. I think that was eight days. So we went in a beautiful place, uh, close to Bogota, really. And just, you just start to learn of these details. And I was really interesting about it because I love the geometry. <laughs> mm -hmm. So with Drumbalo, 
was really, really a great experience. And and I, I remember when we start when he started to talk about uh, Merkava activation, um, Merkava meditation. And for me at that moment was oh, that time was hmm. I don't know meditation with science. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was in other in other time. You have to understand, yeah. no? So spiritual, I don't know, but it's okay. But then I I just so oh wow, yes, makes sense because your body is just energy in in this beautiful geometry and just activate the tetrahedron was a beautiful was beautiful beautiful yes so that's why i know about sacred geometry <laughs> and now uh, doing my research about unified astronomy you can see that everything is connected you know sacred universal geometry with physics, with uh, astrophysics, with cosmology, with biology, with everything, with the micro and the macrocosmos. It's so beautiful. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> and if there was someone starting out wants to be an astronomer, for example, because I know you're so passionate and successful, what tips would you give them? What advice? Do uh, you mean like a things that you really can can be involved in astronomy yeah For you know if, if someone's in school and they're choosing to start a career in astronomy what what advice would you give them oh wow well, uh, you know the experiments experiments is really good um uh, walking on the nature and talk about the astronomy is really good uh, obviously look the sky with the nike nike eye nike yeah. nike, nike naked eye, eye. <laughs> nike die and start to to identify the constellations the movements of the constellations, the movements of the planets, uh, the dynamics and the mechanics of the un the universe, uh, and then use the telescope and see the planets. You don't have idea when you have the kid, like a, I don't know, like seven years old, and put <laughs> his body in, in the telescope and and say. Right now, you will see the Saturn rings. And, and the kids say, OK. And, and yes, he just see and see and see and see and see. Hey, oh, yes, it's true, it's true. I can see the <laughs> Saturn rings. <laughs> and the kids start to cry. and you, 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 it's a beautiful experience. So it's really important to inspire with activities, with books, with a virtual a conference, a with, uh, with the telescopes, go to the observatories, go to the planetariums, and just and you feel the the passion, you know. <laughs> yeah, the power of the universe. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine what it would have been like, you know, where, because as children you look at the stars, but when you look through the telescope, everything is like so incredible, like you're saying. And I wonder what it's like when the first person designed the telescope you know if people what their thoughts were you know how they could believe that they could see through the lens and see it so close yes it's it's a beautiful experience for me it was so beautiful my first time when i saw for example jupiter and then saturn and then mars it's oh my god it's true it's true and it's so beautiful it's perfect obviously the size is Little, 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 
you know, because yeah. it's not that big, 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 big telescope. Yeah. But, and in fact, right now, if I take my telescope and see through them, I, for me, it's a really beautiful experience, this moment. No matter, I can see Jupiter 1,000 times, and it's the same experience, beautiful experience. You see the move, the uh, Jupiter's moon, for example, yeah. and see the, the chains of the rings of Saturn, uh, see the comets, uh, you see the meteor showers. It's so beautiful experience. It's, uh, wow, one... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 10 years ago, <laughs> I went to, to see a uh, Perseids meteor shower, and I count uh, 846 meteors. Wow. Oh, yes. my goodness. <laughs> I remember. I remember because it was the best experience uh, with a, a shower and meteor shower was really beautiful with a big big meteor you know the bullet yeah bullet you can you can hear the explosion and you can see the Goodness. color the meteor is it's fantastic <laughs> i remember <laughs> wow I remember. Yes. Right now, there is one uh, meteor shower. Lyrics, lyrics, meteor shower. It's not too, uh, but it's beautiful. And the eclipse, solar eclipse and moon eclipse are always beautiful. You know, everything is beautiful in the universe. Everything. <laughs> the stars, the dark holes, the nebula. See the nebula uh, telescope is so beautiful. It's beautiful, different colors, the shapes. Yeah. Oh no, it's beautiful. <laughs> well, I'm in love. I think um, everybody should invest in a telescope and yes, um, start sure. looking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. If there was one thing that you could do to change the world, what would it be? <sighs> uh some some feelings bad feelings you know for example the envy envy is really bad for the humanity we have to to be uh, connected we we have to be uh, together all the time because we are we are alone in this planet and if you are not a good person, your participation is is not it's not good. It's not positive, you know. So yes, for example, the bad feelings, the bad feelings of the human being, because it's uh, it's catastrophic. In fact, when you study uh, unified uh, physics and unified astronomy, you can see that. Uh, the the way to go to go in a good uh, or to have a good future is is just unify the people we right. need unification you know right now it's very important uh, we are not separate we can't continue with this uh, stupid feelings, uh, egos, envy, uh, kill, it's, and with the, obviously with the animals, with the environment, we have to take care of our planet, is our spaceship, and <laughs> if we destroy our spaceship, <laughs> you know, we are yeah. stuck. Vulnerable, vulnerable, uh, yes, being. Yeah. So, yes, for me, the the important key is is unificate, unificate, unified, unified the humanity. 
Fantastic. Yeah. That's yeah. lovely. Thinking about the world right now and all these bad things around us, you know, it's, it's really bad. And we have to, to keep good vibes, good feelings, good thoughts all the time and spread the people, you know? Yes. Thank you. So, dear, <laughs> dear listeners, remember unification and be watching your thoughts and, you know, love one another and love the universe and remember that we're all one and we're, and we're all connected. So yes. thank you so much for giving up your precious time to talk to us today. And I shall add all your links and your contact details with the show notes. And I'm sure we'll be having many more talks in future. And fingers crossed we'll be doing more events with you and Asim in Australia and Monaco and globally. So thank you for being you and staying in your power. Thank you. Well, thank you for this beautiful opportunity. Uh, thank you because um, because yes, we we need to have this this moment to talk about it and just see that we have to reconnect with the rest of the people with as humanity, you know. And yes, and I just hope see you again in the beautiful places, doing science, doing a. Uh, inspire people in a good things. <laughs> Thank As you. you. Do, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.